the best. I was going to say, if you need the restroom, you go out the door and turn to the right and there's restrooms in the hallway. We have donuts and something to drink. I had a few handouts and just make yourself comfortable and we'll see if we can get this going. We're going to start this meeting today, uh, October the 10th, around 9 o'clock, and we will start it with a prayer. Lord, thank you for bringing us all together here today, and hopefully we can solve some things and do the best for our community for all of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. And uh, it's pretty obvious we have a lot of public comment. So at this time, I would like to introduce Miss Kate, our attorney. And she will go over the guidelines for these, if you would. Hi, I'm Kate Leverett. I'm uh, one of the attorneys for the district with Grimmer Law Firm. And uh, I know we want to hear everybody's public comment, so we're going to limit the public comment for each person to three minutes. And also, just remember during public comment, the board cannot take any action on the issue because it's not on the agenda. And during public comments, even though you might have questions for the board, it's not a back and forth dialogue. You just go to the podium, express your concerns, and then go back, sit down, and they'll take everything. We have someone recording all of the minutes at the meeting. They'll take all of your considerations into account and hopefully can act on them at, a next, at another meeting. Thank you. And I would like to add, it is very nice y'all right now. We're very concerned about what we need to do with our community. And any ideas that you can share with us will help us and decide what, which way we need to go. And I appreciate y'all coming. I'm sorry we didn't have enough chairs for everybody. But uh, we will start and try to get started with public comments. And uh, we'll start with Mr. James Gibson. Just come up here to the podium, sir. Well, I'll be podium. I'll here. Good morning. And doing a brief review of the budget for TV, TBCD, and these figures are taken directly from your website. It has become very clear why we are experiencing drainage issues. 72% of the drainage budget is dedicated to salaries and transfers to the water and sewer fund. 26% of that 72 goes directly to water and sewer. When looking at the budget for capital improvements, zero dollars are budgeted for drainage improvements, yet $1.3 million is budgeted to transfer to water and sewer. Since Hurricane Harvey, Zero dollars have been budgeted toward drainage improvements. The drainage department is subsidizing the water and sewer department, which was not the original intent of this district when it was established. Property taxes were to go toward drainage and water and sewer rates for the utility department. It is imperative that this board and general manager start working together and return this district to its original intent. I understand 42 inches of rain is a lot of rain. However, we should not have water in our homes six to seven days after an event such as Harvey or Imelda. At 10 p.m. the evening of Imelda, water was entering my home. At noon that very same day, we couldn't flush our toilets. And now you want to expand the Handcomer sewer plant to accommodate a developer who should be bearing the cost of this expansion with the financial burden of this project placed on us through the increase of water and sewer rates, and I'm sure increase in transfers from drainage. This is unacceptable. I respectfully request before you make any decisions today 
that you take a major look at the drainage issues facing us and how you plan to address them. $1.3 million a year will go a long way toward our drainage problems. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. people uh, you know kind of been watching some of the, the stuff on Facebook and some of the heat been working with uh, Commissioner Gore and our judge and others uh, in discussion about where we're at and where we're going uh, looking back uh, after the flood occurred I did look uh, to the, to date uh, since January 1st our road crews have cleaned 144,000 feet of ditch in, in the county, uh, which is good, but there's a lot more ditch out there. Uh, we want to try to get more of it. So <clears throat> actually back in uh, May of this year, we submitted budgets for the upcoming year, uh, submitted to the court. Uh, one of the things I think, you know, Jimmy talking to the constituents in this area, regardless of what we're cleaning, there's a lot more requests than what we've been able to get to this year. So I requested that we actually do a ditch contract to supplement what we were already doing. Uh, the court approved that. So um, we were actually putting together a, uh, a ditch contract uh, where we'll bring in a contractor to work alongside what we're doing, um, especially out in the areas that are further away from the county. Some of the problems that we get into is uh, although we have six, six total drainage crews, two for each of our areas across the county, um, we're a little bit limited on dump trucks. So when we get way out long, uh, away from our base location, like for instance, Winnie, Anahuac, or Mont Bellevue, you get a truck that's sitting out there, uh, they might have to drive 20, 30 miles back to dump a load of dirt and then go back to pick it up. The efficiency is just not there. It's obviously, the closer we are to our base, the more efficient it is. So if I can hire a contractor, get them out there doing that stuff that's not quite as efficient, then it makes us more efficient. So anyway, that was kind of the plan. Uh, we were headed that direction. Uh, since the flood, talked to Jimmy and the judge. I think we're going to try to pull some funds. Uh, at least I'm going to submit that to the court. Uh, hasn't been approved yet, but I'm going to recommend that we even we even take that up higher. Um, so uh, the other thing um, that I think we can do is we made some changes in our culvert policy. Um, in the past, you know, way back, uh, there's some pretty small pipe that used to be put into places. It makes it difficult to really good a good flow uh, coming through. Some of those pipes, it only takes, you know, like a a milk jug or a basketball or a volleyball, you know, something floating around to actually plug it, especially if there's already some grass or some silt growing in those. So I've already taken $100,000 out of my budget and uh, we put in a purchase for uh, 24 inch pipe, uh, $100,000 of 24 inch pipe. And we're gonna spend this winter uh, coming through the areas that have flooded and we're gonna try to increase the ditches from whatever size culverts they have of 12, 15, 18, up to 24 inch, which uh, will really increase uh, you know, the amount of uh, capacity in those ditches. So um, not everything, but like I said, we're, 
looking for every opportunity we can to, you know, increase what we have been doing, multiply it to try to get, uh, you know, the roadside ditches clean. Uh, the other thing Jimmy has asked and the judge has asked me to um, look at, consider, is if we were was to come in and uh, try to help Trinity Bay or take on other larger projects, there's there is grant money out there that we could, uh, you know, uh, try to go after. Um, and so maybe looking at a combination of hiring engineers to supplement some past studies that have been done and put together some regional type of plan um, to go after some long range money to help more of a regional scope of things. So uh, we're looking at all of those things. Uh, we're going to try to do some things, like I said, quick, early, to try to improve things, which should be on smaller rain events, but uh, also look long range as well. So anyway, thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Sarris, for that announcement. That sounds like a good, positive thing the county is doing, and I appreciate that. I believe uh, Mr. Jones is next. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Hi. My name is Scott Jones, and I live uh, in North Winnie on Highway 1663 and a half for 25 years. My house did not flood during the warming, but did flood uh, during the milking for the first time ever. I feel like drainage in my area has been neglected and has deteriorated in the last two years since warming. People in my area would like something done about it. The culverts and ditches that move water away from us, leading to I-10, have been allowed to grow up with silt and vegetation. Also, we would like to see Trinity Bay board members get along with each other. Being a board member of these chambers, ISD, for over 25 years, I know and understand how important it is to have a board all agreeing and moving in the same direction. A continuous 3-2 vote sends the community a negative statement and leaves the community doubting Trinity Bay. Thank you, and please do something to help alleviate our problems. Thank you, Mrs. Scott. My prayers because I pray for the same thing that we can all get together and figure out problems for our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Bobby, I'm not gonna speak, I'm gonna wait for another meeting. All right, sir. Joe Ball, 30. thank you. Uh, yes, I'm sir. not here for the flooding issue. Uh, my prayers go out to all of you. Uh, I have two children that live here and grandkids, so their home's flooded, and uh, we very well understand what you're going through. Uh, but I'm here today to say thank you. Uh, during Imelda, uh, the surface water plant that uh, LMVA owns out there that we purchase our water from went underwater. While Trinity Bay was facing their own crisis here in Winnie, Winnie, Jerry, and Mike Will uh, stepped up to the plate, helped us get water tied into y'all system. Uh, they supplied us water when we were about to run out. Uh, the hours they worked, I understand because I, I didn't sleep through the whole event. So I'm here to say thank you publicly for what you did. Uh, if I didn't know all this was going on, I would probably picked a different meeting. Uh, but the feelings are still the same. Thank you. Uh, you saved our bacon, and we can't thank you enough. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Yes, sir. Uh, Jim, with General Manager. Yes. Good. Uh, Mr. Alfred? Ms. Alfred? I wasn't going to speak outside the home. Wrong form. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I take his place? Sure. <laughs> I'm Pat. Y'all know me. I'm Pat Bond. I've lived here for a long time, and my house was built in '66, and I never had flooding till Harvey, and then I had flooding for Imelda. I had a lot more flooding for Imelda than I did Harvey. I had 28 inches at my house, and for Harvey, I had about 18, maybe. But my problem is, I, my property's on the corner of between 5th and 6th Street on 1406. On the west side of my house, the ditch belongs to the county. When it turns to go in front of my house, it's the state. When it crosses 1406, it's Trinity Bay. So who do I get to clean the ditch? Trinity Bay did clean south of the road 
before mailed it, they come in there and dug out all the trees, and I was so glad. But the ditch in front of my house belongs to the state of Texas, and I can't get anybody to help me. There's culverts that go under 1406. One culvert's clogged up with mud. It don't drain at all. The other side has a little bit of passage. But what are we going to do? Who do I see? Y'all can't help me. You say, oh, that's the state. The county says, oh, that's the state. So where do I go? It, yeah, you go in the circle. Now. And I, I mean, I call, I get all the water from Interstate 10 through that ditch, and it goes to Spindletop. Yes, ma'am. And that's one of the main ditches in Winnie. So I need some help from somebody that can tell me who's going to clean the ditch. You know, I know Miss, this guy's an engineer, but he works for the county, so he can clean my ditch on the side. <laughs> So I just need some help. And I know that everybody in Winnie loved it, but I mean, I just got back in my house two months. I know, it hadn't been long. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for giving me your time. Yes, Ms. So I can say uh, I, I'm familiar with, with TxDOT. Uh, they, have a new district, they have a new district engineer over there. You might happen to know he lives in Lumberton. He, I his, heard he's a good guy. He is a good guy. Yeah. His name is Don Smith, and his house also flooded. Wow. So I think he's interested in probably trying to address concerns. So. Well, I've tried to fight with him for years, and I've never had any results. Yeah, I think if you called the district office over there, they'd in probably Beaumont? be able to help you. So. Thank and, you. And, and, and I'll say that there's also, uh, if you go online, there is an opportunity to, under a complaint section on the TxDOT website, for being able to put in stuff, and it goes to Austin, and it'll come back through Beaumont, and they'll be able to probably do something. But probably calling them directly is probably the best way. So, Don Smith. Don Smith. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Nothing today. Uh, Joe Lou. Yeah. Well, first of all, I appreciate the work y'all do, but the problem I have, and all the COVID that y'all are cleaning in town is great, but when it comes back to my property, uh, all those trees in that ditch is not going to allow all that flooding that y'all are sending on us to drain. There's one ditch back there that the trees are probably bigger around these chairs, and that water's not running through. I'll clean it for free if I'm allowed to get in that ditch, because I, I don't want my house flooding again, nor all my neighbors either. And I watched the water go backwards twice because of those trees in that ditch. And if I got to get in there, I'll clean it. If I get in trouble, it is what it is, but we lost probably 30 homes in that because of that one ditch. And I saw you at the service station, you told me that, and I already told you, Jerry, and they were gonna get on that. Okay. I appreciate it, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, I'll do it for free. I just, I want the trees gone somehow. Okay, thank, thank you, Jeff. Uh, Mr. Nelson? This is Mays Nelson. Thank y'all for having me today. I, uh, you know, it's hard to believe we're here again. You know, everybody's lost everything the second time in two years. And some of these reasons behind it are very, very foreseeable, like Liberty County cleaning out spindle top and where's that water gonna go? You know, when you have a, a four inch pipe going in a two inch pipe, what happens <coughs> to a two inch pipe? You know, well, we saw that. And then I-10, you know, impounds water on people. It's a, it's a levy, it's a dam. Oh, but then there are other things that, you know, we just don't know, like what's happening in Jefferson County with DD3 and DD6. Because right. water wasn't draining down spindle top, and that's over in the <clears throat> Jefferson County side, and we really don't know that. So what we have to do, and what I'm going to ask this board to do as soon as they possibly can, is we have to do a spindle top watershed study. We have to fix the whole thing, not just part of it, not just part of the pipe, the whole pipe, all the way to the Gulf. So uh, the Water Development Board has met with Mike Windsor already, or Jerry, I believe, uh, and they have grant money available finally. To do that, so we passed a uh, something also this session. The state's really never done a lot for drainage. It's never really had any money there for drainage, and we pa passed a flood mitigation fund this past session. So all that billions in Harvey money is just sitting there. Well, now the state will match the local money to draw more of that down. But we can't do any of that until we have a watershed study to know exactly what we need to do to get our community drained. So that's my request of, of this board is to, to
to do that study and draw down that money as quickly as you possibly can because that's square one. We can't begin any of these projects. We can't draw down any of that money until we have that study done. So we've got to do that. We've got to do that as fast as we can. And the Water Development Board is there to help. And second thing that I, I wanted to request, and I talked to Mike about it, is disaster reappraisals. So, you know, y'all's home was valued in January. We got flooded in September. So when you pay your property taxes this next January, you know, that's based on the value you don't have anymore. You know, your home's destroyed. So this board I've asked to please come in there and revalue this year's taxes, 2019 taxes, to allow you to keep more of your hard-earned money in your own pocket so you can rebuild. And they have, they've, uh, Mike has said he's, he likes that idea, uh, and so I guess the next board meeting we need to get that on the agenda and voted on and passed so you can keep more of your hard-earned money in your own pocket for this year, for 2019 taxes. Oh, so I'm, I'm here to help. I just can't tell you um, how sorry I meant this happened again. I met with Donald Smith yesterday, the textile engineer, and you know, uh, they were loath to admit, you know, that their engineering had caused this, but that's what it did, you know. It sheeted off before, you know. It sheeted just like you saw in 65, sheeting over 65. That's what used to happen, uh, and it, it doesn't anymore, and we got to fix this. You know, we won't have a community if we don't fix this, so thank you all. too that uh, Mays is our representative and I believe he truly cares about the people. I do. And I appreciate you. Jim? I'll make a comment. <clears throat> also, you know, I'm a county commissioner and I've been honored to serve you all. Uh, I'm going to add to what Corey was saying a while ago. Uh, I met with the judge, I met with the engineers and Mays and everybody. The county also, we're getting the Plan together, which has got to go before the court and be voted on to purchase three big trackos, three big skid steers, to start at the bottom of some of these ditches and start planting to assist Trinity Bay and the other areas of our county where we have issues everywhere. And say I met with Joe and everybody around through this area. So uh, we're going to hopefully get approval on that machinery and add personnel that's going to start cleaning and maintain these ditches and say what we do over here and everything will be assisted training Bay. But start at the bottom and start cleaning back up. After we get the drainage study that Mays and I'm talking about, um, we're looking at uh, working with Allen Sims and LJA to get a scope of work together to see what could be a long range plan to maybe do a diverse ditch off the spindle top and take it all the way to the intercoastal. But we need that study to get started on that and start down there and dig something back. I think it's probably easier to dig a new ditch with all the rules and regulations than it is to come in and widen spindle top unless we can get those rules and regulations relax the core. Uh, but we are looking, that's our short range plan is to start cleaning as well as the county to find our place and not only clean our roadside ditches but get in and get the main ditches. We can clean every roadside ditch in the county, but when it hits the other areas that are not clean, it's going to start backing up in traffic. That's what happened up in Liberty County. When they clean theirs, it gets here, it spreads out. It gets to the interstate, it spreads out. It gets to 65, it spreads out, and it's like a pool there. So that's that's our short range plan to get in here with equipment and start cleaning. And, more and then long range plans <laughs> look at the looking at the diversion ditch to the intercoastal. So that's, that's the county's plan that we're wanting to move forward with. Thank you, Mr. Yes, ma'am? I didn't sign the paper because I kind of wanted to listen, but can I? Yes, ma'am, you are. My name's Kimberly Middleton. Kimberly. And I live off of North Lake. I live on North Lake Drive. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm new to the community. I've been here two years, well, almost three. Well, welcome. Um, so I'm new to the community. So I just want to say that um, I came to listen because this is going to be a deal breaker for me, um, staying in your community. I've been here two years and I've flooded now twice. I have a shame. Okay. And, and you can tell so that we're I'm trying to I'm going to tell you more. right now, this is a deal breaker for me and my husband. Yes, ma'am. Um, so that's why I came here today. Um, I want to see what your plans are because on the lake we have called. Um, 
Debbie and I have called and we have asked to have our ditches cleaned and asked to have our ditches cleaned and asked to have our ditches cleaned and nothing has happened. Um, I can tell you this last flood, the ditches flowed reverse. <laughs> when, it, when it was trying to go down, it was going the back way. It was reversing. And I-10 actually flowed backwards through my house and into that little lake behind me. It didn't, it didn't come from the lake, it came from I-10 and I had to wait for I-10 to recede through my house mm -hmm. and into that lake behind me. That's how it happened. Terrible. I had over 20 some inches in my house, 34 on the outside, but it all came from I-10 through my house. So now I've had, twice now I've played, <coughs> it was way worse than Marty, the first, from Marty, and I watched the ditches flow backwards. Instead of flowing this way, they flow this way. So they flow towards the people at the end of the road. And when it stitched, it should have flowed towards the other way. And I watched it. And I sat there and I thought to myself, wow. And we asked for a long time, we've been asking to have the ditches clean in our neighborhood. Uh, I know Debbie's come down and she's put them, I know I've called because I had some sewage in my ditch at one time and nothing. I never saw anybody come out, anybody come to do anything. And here I am. Here. So I can only imagine what it is for other residents. Do we fix our houses up and put them up for sale and look for higher ground? I, mean, I, I love, where I, love where I love where I live. I mean, I love my home. I love where it's at. We chose it for a reason. Yes, ma'am. And now, to a point, do I just walk away from Winnie and find some other place, or what? I mean, what y'all do now depends on whether I stay. Thank you very much. Mrs. Uh, Tor, Mrs. Lillian? Milton. That was a mistake. Oh, it was? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, Richie DeVille. Uh, I'm on the north side of I-10. I know a lot of you in here. I have that same problem twice now. We've seen since they changed the interstate. That's a, that's a different issue. But when they rebuilt the interstate back in the 90s, they widened it, elevated it, and they boxed the, what was clear span bridges over the interstate previously. We never had any issues before that. When that happened, TxDOT did their own study, their own engineers. They did what they wanted to do. And Trinity Bay did nothing, nothing. And I know these people weren't sitting here. I don't, I don't know exactly who I was on the board at the time, but Trinity Bay didn't do anything to object or to confer, to make it correct to be uh, enough volume going underneath the interstate at those points. Yeah, that which is wrong, Rich. It, it, absolutely. The same right. thing is happening with Liberty County. Yes. Cleaning their ditches out and dumping all that water on us. Right. I, know, I know some of y'all were here when that happened. How did that happen? How does that happen? That should not happen. I, I would like to say, Rich, east of Wayne, we had an opportunity, I-10 was being worked on. We had an opportunity to put extra boxes under I-10. Right, I got pictures of those. I have pictures of those right now. They're right. putting them in and they're, they're, and they're bringing them up and they're covering them up as there, fast as they can. A lot of the entities would not let us open them because they didn't want the excess water. Still, I understand, right. I understand. And that's wrong too. Absolutely, absolutely. But that's what this, dis this district was charged in the 50s. Right. To drain this area, which was a natural coastal plain, yes. so it could be productive for farmland. And, and it has not been maintained. The ditches haven't been cleaned. Where is the money? Why is there there are millions of dollars coming out of the drainage fund going to water and sewer? The drainage fund. I'm just, I don't know if everybody knows how it's funded. It's ad valorem tax, our property tax. That's what pays for our drainage. That's what pays for the infrastructure here to keep our ditches maintained and improve our ditches. The water and sewer is fee-based. It's a business, basically. So what I want to know is how much money over, and how many years it's gone over out of, out of the drainage funds, our tax dollars, to fund water and sewer. And has it been paid, what's been paid back, when it's been paid back, and how much of it's been paid back? Because yes. that does not seem right to me at all. Yes. The money is out there, like May's talked about, and I, I have to give I have to give high praise to Mays Middleton. There's not a better advocate in our area 
to look after our interests. This, this man has worked tirelessly for us, and he, he's going to in the future. He is, he's a godsend to us when we need him back with as many politicians as, as I could over the last, what, three weeks now? No, more than two years now since Harvey. To get something done, to try to get things changed. There's money that's been out there since Harvey to fund these projects. And it's just sitting there. Entities are not talking. Entities are not working together. That's and and that, that can't go. The, people, the people in here are not working together. Right. Right. The people in here, I mean, it's, I, I haven't been to a meeting, and that's, that's my fault. But I've watched, I've tried to watch some of, this, some of the meetings on, online. Yes, sir. It's embarrassing. It's truly embarrassing. I mean, <laughs> Button heads, no matter what, over personalities or whatever the issue is. If there's problems, identify it, solve it, and move on. Yes, sir. But just button heads because you have a difference in opinion. I don't care how deep rooted it is. We're not being served because of it. Y'all have to get past that, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Because it's costing us money. We're being put out of our homes two out of the last three years, and that is unacceptable. We have our own, north of 10, we've got our own unique problems. But the new south of 10 doesn't take away what happened to any of us. But we also have our problem and your problem. The ditch is down below. So we're, we're, we're in this together. But we together, and with, with May's help, and with the money that's out there, we got to come up with some solutions. And just like Jimmy said, that's a great thing that they're doing, that the county's doing, to try to pitch in to help get these ditches clean. Yes, but for God's sake, let's start at the bottom <laughs> with a plan and, and clean all the way up and not bounce around. <laughs> Up here. 
Thank you. She's the boss, in case y'all haven't learned. Um, I'm Kelly Toops. I do live north of I-10-2, right across County Line. We do own County Line Diesel Towing here in Winnie. This is our second time also. It was worse than Harvey. It did affect our business this time. I don't feel necessarily that this is just Tech Stock's problem or just Trinity Bay's problem or just God's problem. I feel like it's a combination of everything and as um, fairly intelligent people, we should all step up and do what needs to be done. But most importantly, I saw somebody talking about how, uh, thank God we've had all these floods and we all worked together and everything was great and we didn't lose anybody. But people like Mr. Spencer and right. other people that have been here a long time can't keep doing this. And two months after Harvey, we lost Trevor Shishon, and he didn't die from flooding. But if it doesn't put things into perspective for you, then I don't know what will. I agree with Richie. This, you're all adults. And if you don't want to do what you don't do and get along, get off the board. It's that simple. <laughs> so far and it, and the ditch has not been finished back there. And when it gets so far, when it gets to that Carrie and Joe Bert, Bertrand's house, it comes back on us. I had four foot of water in my house. Yes. I think and I've never had flooded. I've been here fifty four years so that ditch needs to be finished. Yes ma'am it does. Yes I appreciate that. Your name Patricia Sonia. Patricia Sonia. Thank you Miss Sonia. Appreciate it. Yes ma'am that's you or me? I'm Ty Jones. I'm probably one of the younger people in here in this community. Okay, I'd ask her to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Mayor Hurts. I'm Paula West. I live on South McDaniel. Yes. And we flooded for the second time. Yes, Miss And it is not an easy thing, as everybody knows, to get your house back in order. And I stand here with this on my neck yeah, because I'm trying, I was trying to get my house back in order to get <coughs> Imelda out. And all that we have to do, trying to find somebody who can elevate our home because we can't go through this again. We have flood insurance, we pay for it. But guess what? I got a bid of $120,000 to elevate my home. That's ridiculous. You may have it, I don't have it. So we have to do something. I called Trinity Bay uh, to get that, what is it, Mayhawk Bayou or whatever, on the side of us clean. It had just all kind of rubbish in there. Yes, they said it's gonna be about two weeks and we're gonna come out and clean it. Guess what, it didn't happen. Right. But the flood came. I'm sorry about that. Please. So we have to do something. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You're Quick. exactly right. Thank you, Ms. Way. Yes, ma'am. I was just kind of listening to what everybody said. Uh, I kind of start with Mays. He said there's a, the state has a lot of money to spend that we would be possibly needing to match. Then you go over here to what Richie said about taking our county money, our tax money, and transferring it into the drainage district portion, the sewer and the water. Well, when it comes time to match this money, if you're taking all our money and raising our rates, what money are we going to have to match? You know, so I think y'all better think very hard about what our opinions are on y'all spending money over there on the other side of the county on a subdivision project with our tax money. So that's just my opinion. It just doesn't now all add up. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, I'll speak, Mike. Bobby, you ready? Yeah, I've been listening to everybody here. Uh, I don't know everybody here. I've been here a long time. My family's been here a long time. I see my friend Virgil White. He said he flooded the worst he's ever flooded off your new Mayhawk Bio Ditch. Jefferson. No, it's Chambers County. It's coming out of Chambers. Rich is so right. There's no money left in drainage. $3.5 million in the last three years, Rich, they've taken in, roughly. So $1.6 they've got in the budget this year. Figure that. $5 million. 
And I don't understand all of this to do water lines for the county. They already had a six inch water line to Smith Point, now they're laying a 12 that we're paying for the equipment and everything out of it. Because there's no money left over to pay us because they went to a 12 inch line. So I don't understand, but y'all have to say, quit spending every drainage money. Because when you go down and Richie's right, you need to start on the bottom and work up. Because that's where we have our land, we have water for the deep. <coughs> so I'm just going to say that's where your drainage money is going, Richie. Thank you, God. Uh, yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, I may have missed it. Maybe. Uh, Jimmy will go. But who is responsible for the watershed shed study? And also, will this study address the problems on Interstate 10? Texas. I can answer some of that. It, that was actually in our budget this, this year. And uh, I would like to do that. We have to do that to have the watershed to go out for to get government funding. Okay. Everything steps has steps to do, and this is a necessary thing we need to do. So and this I, group is responsible for that watershed study. Yes. Sir. And when will that be on the agenda? Next week. Next next month. Why did it get done in the last budget? It should have been, but it was voted out by some of the members that didn't want to spend the money. The study cost two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So we floated during the so we chose not to do a water study. But we water have study, right? we have to have a guideline on which way to go and the water study shows us the guideline. On we what to spend the money for study that's still good on spending. So the No, it's not, Richie. It's not a complete study. Where is the huge problem? Right. It's not a complete study. Yes, sir. We need a complete Okay. Yes, sir. So I guess you know, I used to be on these meetings through these committees, yes. and if something came up that needed to be addressed, it wasn't on our agenda. We had a special meeting. Correct, we can. We please and address this, and I'm sure there's quite a few people that want to be here and see if you're going to approve <coughs> this watershed study. As far as I want it already, I'm, I'm for it. Then let's, let's put that up right now. You can call for a special meeting. Yes, thank you. <laughs> this month. Thank you. This one. Yeah, introduce yourself. Yes, talking to you, right? Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Harry Henry. I live in Spindle Top Edition. Is that what you're referring to, what the problem is? No, sir. Or is this just the name of the, uh, okay. The Spindle Top anyway. drainage is, is what drains all of that west side of Wind. Okay. Well, when you come down Buccaneer and make a left on Derrick, yes, all the left on Spindle Top, okay. when you come to the end of the neighborhood, there's three houses back there are brick homes. We're on the ground. Everybody else is on piers. Every time it flooded, Harvey and this one. When I was the first responder, I've been running for 29 years. Yes, sir. Because the line of work I had, I couldn't talk. But there's something that's missing. God given common sense. When you say that you have to go 30 miles with that dirt, is that because of environmental reasons? Because my land, I put no less than 45 loads of dirt in it, and it eats it. We actually have a boat in our yard just to get across our property sometimes. Now, the other thing is neighbors just driving through, buzzing through. Why, why are y'all going through uh, this kind of study well, you got the people you need to talk to about the issues right here. They are not up in our area dealing with this. It's a sad situation. Yeah, that's in Jefferson County. Yes, sir. Well, I'm from I'm from Fort Arthur. Yes, sir. And you don't want to be that bad. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> As a young boy, 12 years old, a day just like this, playing in the street in front of my mother's house, I ran in the house and said, where is this flood water coming from? It was coming from a, another neighborhood. Redirected. Like I said, you can have your little studies. I'm not trying to insult you, sir. No, I am But we mean business here. This is a beautiful community. You, you never seen bad. That's where I'm from. This poor out is nice, but it's got its issues. We need to fix this little simple problem here. If it just means getting somebody that has tractors like Mr. Booth or somebody to do the work, we'll contract them. 
Yes, sir. Reduce your taxes. Do something that makes sense. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, I live on uh, Main Street, between Main Street, on the corner of Main Street and Camden Store. I've been fighting the War Department ever since Mendenhall was the commissioner. Yes. I don't show Richie. I don't show him what, what the problem is. They say they're going to fix it. Never shows up. And the, the dish that passed in front of my house all the way down, almost in the big and dump into the same body Paul was talking about. Man, they got trees in there, in the ditch, two foot, three foot wide. And I talked to him about it, he said, ditch belongs to Trinity Bay. Talked to Trinity Bay, they say it belongs to James Conn. So who owned the ditch? That is a, that is a problem. Sometimes the uh, easement issues are a problem. And uh, we try to work it out. I know I rode with you one time, and you showed me yeah. around. Right, yeah, that's my, and also, uh, they say you can't get a, a permit to dig. Right. I think that's a bunch of hogwash. Because I work for an oil company. They get permits all the time. Yes, sir. Don't take them six years or three years to get a permit. Right. If they want to dig something this month, next month, they file a permit by the money hit, next month they dig it. Yes, sir. So, if they can get permits, how come the Chambers County can't get permits to do yes, And we have on the other thing, that's right. And you're exactly right, and I appreciate it too. I mean, something needs to be done. And yes, also, sir. I got a cover in front of my house. It should be a round cover. They say it's one of those uh, type of cover that's it's flat. I think I showed you, Mike, and I think I showed you. You did. I mean, a flat cover compared to a round cover. I think you get more water out of the round cover than this flat cover. And plus when you go down by the, the, where the old drivers used to be, all the water's on the, on the north side, drains to the south side, which the same dish pass in front of my house, plus you got all the water coming down the track, all trying to go to that one cover. Yes. Then you got all the water coming from the cables, come down that same ditch, trying to go right in front of my house through that one cover. Ain't no way possible all that water go through that ditch. It was bad engineering. Yeah. And then I showed them, a dish that go round the, down the track, don't see a little dish go round right alongside 124, take it to the Spinnacock spin Canal. They need to clean that. They say they're gonna dig it, then they dug a ditch on the side of the track, dug one ditch so low it can't dump into the other ditch. <laughs> I mean, you got engineers or anybody with any kind of common sense should be able to dig a ditch. And everybody in here was rice farmers. Water. Or your grandparents with rice farm. Yes. You should know how water drains. Yes, they don't drain uphill, does it? No. <laughs> but they're going to try to make it drain uphill. Uh -huh. They're going to dig a grand canyon for the house. That's what they're going to do. Tell me y'all probably going to solve that thing. Y'all find a few houses. Yeah, we're going to solve the water. Problem just dig a ditch deeper. That ain't solving the problem. Just putting more water in front of people's house. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> so I had a job. Yeah. And it's apparent to me that there's a couple of things that's got to be done here. One of them is a long-term solution. Diversion channels may work. Uh, I'm telling you right now, when I was a system manager for this district 25 years ago, that's when they started talking about that diversion channel, and they're just getting through with it. We don't have that long. We need something done now. We need a short-term solution. The studies and all of that is great, and that does need to be done. Spin on top watershed needs to be studied. When water was coming in my house, we'd had about 11 inches of rain, not 42. And that's never happened before. What's holding it up? We've got to get out there and figure out what's holding it up to give all of these people some relief. I understand that there was a proposal or discussion about a study for spin top and it was going to cost a couple hundred thousand dollars. And y'all decided not to do it. It wasn't me. It cost me $170,000 after Harvard to fix my house. Yes. And that's one house. And that is the problem. And if we, if we don't get off dead center off the fence and go the right direction, it'll never get done. And it's going to take, to take all the five of you to do that. Right. Right. To, Please. To climb Please. a mountain, it takes one step after another. And you have to take two years. Y'all had two years to do something. 
Yes. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Just line up. When the water was coming in my house that night, when I got up, it was ankle deep. Before I could get out, it was waist deep. And the water wasn't rising. It was rushing through my house. It was coming from I-10 south. It wasn't that big ditch coming into my house. Yes, but when I get out in the yard to get rescued, it took three people to hold on to me and themselves to try to get across the current. So why is there such a current? I'm getting Interstate 10 water. Oh, yes, ma'am. And it was unbelievable. But let me tell you something else, and y'all heard me for many years with my sewer. The water was bubbling up into the commode and the bathtub. My bathtub filled with sewer water and overflowed into my house. And that's through the sewer system. It's not rising water or flooding water. But that's another issue that's never been addressed with Trinity Bay. And I've been on your agenda for many years about that. I even called the man in Anahuac that was over all this. Can I send company to your house to flush the toilet? Because I can't flush it here. You know, I mean, that's been going on for years. But this flood here, it was unbelievable that the water was coming up in the tub and the commode. At first, I thought my commode had overflowed is when I got up and stood in water. But they just, it was so fast, it, it was unbelievable. In 30 minutes, it was waist deep. Thank, thank you, Mr. Okay, thank you. You all understand that y'all said you're going to start at the bottom. What is the bottom? Work your way up. What is that? Okay, that's uh, a lot of places. Uh, it, it depends on what ditch you're on. We're I'm on the Mayhaw ditch, but what I'm what I'm talking Our about is it only goes to far. Well, if you if you clean out this problem, that's going to dump more water on me. So shouldn't you start where we dump into? Yeah, that said, and work your way back. Right. And that's exactly right, because they have to do their part, too. Y'all have, have to work together. Yes, yes. there's no doubt. It's not going to work unless we all work together. Yeah. Because we can only go so far. And I appreciate it. Yes, sir, in the back? Yes, sir. Um, I heard y'all talking about the east side of the county. Y'all studying, y'all quick fix. Does that include from 563? Between 562 back back down Belt Lane and all that area, going going toward Double Bow, because I live on that side of the county and I I flooded twice off of Posse Road Lane Three. You know, yep, <laughs> we have plenty of dick in there. Uh, what happened is that Double Bow, the west fork of Double Bow, overflowed its bank and it backed up. And you can't, you, you can only put so much water in a bucket and it's going to overflow. Uh, we have got a, a plan in place where we're going to do similar to what the city did with an underground storm system <coughs> to go down 2936 all the way to Trinity Bay. Uh, that's in the discussions right now and that will relieve the west part of Double Bottom. It should help. Which will relieve all, all the drainage on that one. That side. Okay, because there's a lot of flood ditches, and I don't know who they belong to, in between 563 and 562. Right. Running by Posse. Um, they've never been clean. I've been there 20 years. That has, uh, you're right, some of that has been, and that's a shame. The, the, the easement that TPCD has is from 2936 north, from 2936 south to Ward. The bow, we don't have an easement. Can't get we cannot work when we don't have an easement. That's what we need to do is get on the bow and start acquiring more easement. That way we can clean. But without an easement, it'd be like me coming into your yard and digging your yard up and you say, what, what are you doing here? Okay. We're, you we're have a ride. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Yes, sir. I'm going to ride your side. I'm also by the ditch where she's talking about on 1406. Two years, two and a half years ago, I was here at this meeting. I was complaining about the drainage then, about the sewer systems. They did come and fix some of the sewers. The drainage never got fixed. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, I get four inches of rain. It's underneath my house. I tell him every time. I send him pictures. The ditch has never been fixed. I took several pictures all over the county 
a lot of trees are growing, everything, nothing's been done. At that meeting, you stated that you were going to get the equipment from Anahuac, start cleaning the ditches. How many ditches got cleaned? I'm not sure. Why not? I don't know. Who's in, in charge? Who's in charge? There's five board members. How many of you got water in your house? I, I did. I don't know. Tony did. I don't think. I got it. So we're all in, we're family too. But what I'm trying to say is, right. you've had three years that you did nothing. You're going to do all these studies. He did do the sewer. The sewer got fixed. The drainage, nothing. It's ignored. So are we going to go another three years with the same people in charge and nothing gets done? Because evidently, that's, the, that's what you're saying. Nobody knows what's going on. You can't give an answer, but you're in charge. But thank you for your comment. To answer your question, where I live during a 1915 storm, Mr. Manson Smith rode horseback across there, and there was two pots that were sticking out of the ground. And he built on one, he sold my dad to other. Since 1915, it had never flooded until the middle. Yeah. And I had shot water in my shop. I sure did. Has anybody seen water fall so much so fast? It's not the amount of water, it's how fast it fell from the sky. It doesn't matter. I get four inches that goes under my house. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not crazy. crazy. We, we need, that is crazy. We need to say that. Yes, What I'm saying is, it's like Mr. Gibson said, you know, in, in, 10, in 10 inches, you shouldn't have flooded it out. No, but when you put 10 inches in, in just a few hours, nothing's going to, the water has to have time to run off. You didn't do it. Okay. Since 1915, during the mail, the first time that my ear. Well, what I'm trying to say is, if I'm contacting Mr. Jiggins, because I know it. If you're getting four inches and you're holding water, you have a problem. That's right. Yeah, the problem should have been fixed three years ago. And you're That's right. The ditches should have been cleaned out three years ago. Thank you. The trees should have been removed three years ago. I appreciate it. Thank right. you. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Uh, years ago, we had drag lines and we had drag lines. And you could see a drag line. I'm talking about back in the 50s. Yes. Why aren't we digging these ditches instead of mowing these ditches? Because you mow a tellerball tree down and you're just inviting fire from the stump to come back. Yes. And that drags debris. And another thing, the Ogden ditch where take some of our water out, you can build a house on the islands in that ditch. Right. So it comes come. from way up north. And if we don't start digging these ditches, all this is for nothing. Right. I will move out here. And you know as well as I do, Corps of Engineers, all okay, of Okay, that's the main problem. Right? You know that. I hear about Trinity Bay and I hear about Tech Stop, but the Corps of Engineers, that's who we need to and get. They out. limit us to what we can and cannot do. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. The Corps is going to be a lot more receptive. They will be. this problem right now, so yes. let's, let's make it happen. While it's right. hot, we need to do something. Yes. Okay, thank you. Is there any other comments? Please. Yes, sir. When the state builds new roads, they raise the road there. Highway 65, an example. My water floods that way and yes. gets dammed up. There's really no drainage in that big uh, horse pasture out there. Exactly. Where's it supposed to go when the state builds a road like that? Yeah, and you're right, because they got over there. The textile is concerned about the roads flooding. They're not concerned about the area around it. Fine. But that horse pasture is mine. <laughs> and it has a slough through it and it has a textile ditch through it. Yes. Textile has never cleaned it out, but Trinity Bay has gone and cleaned it up several times. With a temporary out Thank you, sir. Is there any other comment? I think it's just important to keep in mind that, you know, he was just commenting that it, you know, four inches and it holds water. If you have not taken a trip down I-10 from Chambers County to Taylor's Bayou, if this happens in the next month or two, we're going to be in even more trouble because the interstate is extremely high with the same barriers and we are going to be in a lot of trouble. And I would like to say, if y'all saw the <laughs> 
that I put up there by the sign-in sheet, this was a, a, a gathering of all the entities, and they had several good ideas. And they're all talking, they're all doing, Maze is working on it, Jimmy's working on it. Everybody, and like Richie said, we gave you got the Corps of Engineers interested. Everybody that restricts us and what we can do is want to talk about it because they're concerned about the people. What about DD6 and DD3? How do y'all get along with them? Not very good. They're but concerned about the people. They're concerned about the people being shut down. That's what they're more concerned about. Exactly. But uh, I appreciate y'all's comments today. Gloria? May I make a comment? So this is comment? Okay, thank you. Uh, Gloria Romer, managing editor of CB Speaking. I also live in Stowell, Texas. I've been sitting through all these meetings, as a lot of y'all know, read the paper, and I hope that the call to action is one of the reasons why y'all are here about this. There are two issues here that are not being addressed at all. The number one issue is why are you taking $5 million out of drainage? Why are you taking $5 million out of drainage? Because, I'm going to tell you. Right? Okay. Please tell I'll, me. I'll explain tell to these people. The, I
Motion has carried. Item number five approves the financial reports. Ms. Sherry? Monthly financial transactions for September 2019 for the general fund, the revenue realized is $121,725. Expenditures were $328,725. For 100% of the fiscal year, the revenue realized was 121.79% of the fiscal budget and expended 95.44% of the fiscal budget without the transfers. The water and sewer fund, the revenue realized is $467,304 and the expenditures were $424,089. For 100% of the fiscal year, the revenue realized is 101.08% of the fiscal budget without the transfers and we have expended 81.68% of the fiscal budget. And the cash balances for September 2019. The cash and CDs is $5,303,127. The restricted amount is two million thirty-one thousand six hundred and fifty-nine dollars. The unrestricted is three million two hundred seventy-one thousand four hundred and sixty-eight dollars. Thank you, Ms. Sherry. All in favor? I have a Yes, ma'am. What you got? Okay, on your drainage fund. If you take out the seven hundred thousand, you should have transferred to water and sewer. Right, we did. We've already moved it, man. It's showing in here. We moved eight hundred thousand in yes. here. I'm talking about the seven hundred thousand for the new budget. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that that will. You should fund the budget the first of October. Yeah, but this is September. I know, but I'm saying at the end of September, right? You had a million four left right. in your CD. And your checking account, you're really not going to have enough to pay your bills because you got another hundred thousand coming on your building insurance. So you're going to have to come out of CD to do it. Okay, out of that need for, if you transfer to October first with the new budget, seven hundred thousand to fund the budget, and you take three sixty two for your escrow account for your sewer plant, that leaves you three hundred ninety two thousand, which May pay your bills for October, but you've got to fund drainage until January, February when you get tax money. How are you going to do it? And we've already received money from the county. Not the enough other. to fund your budget. Mom. No, ma'am, but it's coming in. Yes, ma'am, and you know that. Well, don't don't be arrogant with me. I'm, sure I'm not, ma'am. Yeah. And we have when you do that three hundred thousand left, three hundred and eighty-two thousand. Left to fund drainage till February when you get your majority of your tax money. How do you plan to do that? Everybody just keeps spending. This group has asked, where does the money go? Hell if I know, they just move it around, but it's gone. I've been telling y'all for six months we can't make the end of the year with this, and we're at the end of the year, first month of the new year. You're totally out of money and drainage, but you're still planning on this agenda. Tell you are not out of money. Okay. okay, for the record, one more time. Yes, ma'am. You're broke. No, ma'am. Now we can vote on the financials. Okay, thank you, ma'am. We need a motion to approve financial reports, please. Well, we do. And, and now we need to vote. All in favor? Uh -huh. Motion has carried. Approved. Taxpayer report number 825. Chambers County Office 2019 collections for $37,319 with the current levy collection rate of 98.12%. In August 2018, the collections were $14,307 with the collection rate of 96.70%. Jefferson County Office 2019 collections were $22 with the current levy collection rate of 101.81%. The August 2018 
$27 for the collection rate of 93.90%. I'll make a motion to approve the tax rate number eight twenty-five. I'll second the motion. All in favor? All right. Motion has carried. Moving on to item number seven, review and consider approval of counts payable. Okay, I do have a question on the big insurance policy on the buildings, trucks, liabilities, and things. Jerry sent me a copy of the summary sheet because I asked in the last meeting where it was. I knew it always comes at the first of the year, which is kind of hard. When you're shuffling money first of October. Um, Jerry Matt said last meeting that nothing changed on it, but the premium dropped. The flood insurance deductibles went sky high. We might as well just take those off, take off flood that you're never going to collect anymore. Everybody's did. Well, but you told me last meeting none of the I told you some went up and some went down. Well, they went from a minimum twenty five hundred to oh uh twenty five hundred and fifty thousand last year to a hundred thousand and twenty two hundred and fifty thousand this year, that's a pretty big jump. So before you write the check, I'm thinking we just drop the flow. Because your deductible is gonna be more than your expense is gonna be on it. But we need to decide. Yeah, so if you have one water plant that's worth ten million dollars to wash out two hundred and fifty thousand dollars deductible. But Which, this is on the building, and what does it cover on contents? You, everything that, that's on there is this building, our water plants, our sewer plants. Well, I know they had a lot destroyed night, but we didn't collect a penny because we had these same deductibles. It was yes. ridiculous. You had insurance, so they do not pay if you have your own insurance. That's board. Right. That's board decision. Okay. You made a good point, but do, do we leave ourselves exposed to that? I don't know. So and, our, and our rate actually went down. So, well, yeah, a little. How much? What if we pay the same rate? Could we get a lower deductible? No. Well, you can. Uh, I talked with the insurance agent about that, and you can go out and you can get a separate policy, but it would cost you just as much to have a separate <laughs> policy. So, no, if we pay the same rate, we can get a lower deductible than the two hundred thousand. Yeah. Everybody's went up. Should, then should we get our insurance again? Probably, but it's too late now. Should we, should we take a bit on insurance? I think we discussed that last time, but <laughs> next year going out for for, for another formal bid for insurance. Okay, I just, I just want to wonder if we yes, I, You know, I, I hate to say it to people, but I, you know, I think this is what the public is talking about. Every meeting is like this. I mean, it's this and that and looking at everything that you're trying to do and trying to make me look like I'm not doing my job and so on and so forth. So this is my well, opinion. Jerry, I have a problem with that. No, we need to get that out of track here. Mike, please, man. Okay. I have a problem with the fact that there's a signed contract of 50000 that board's not seen. I have a problem you tell me the deductibles didn't change last month, but they did. I did tell you. You told me last one didn't I told you some went not. up and some went down. No. Okay. On your accounts payable last month on our agenda, we approved one truck, but two trucks came in. I on know because I payable. asked for the other one six months before. So if you go back to some of the earlier agendas, that it was in there. Fine. All. Okay. Never mind. Okay. And now back to the insurance. So we couldn't pay it out last month. It starts hey, in October. Because it starts October 1, yeah, and we need the new money, mm -hmm. New Year's money for that. But they're in it's not on our payables. But I'm sure you're on a deadline to pay. So there's a $209,000 bill that won't be approved when it's paid. These are my rights. These. And, and you can't argue with that. I submitted it to, to our payroll. Uh, you to can. The auditors over here. Okay, I've already, asked, I've already asked in the right why was it not on. Sherry said, because we have to do it in October, it'll be on next month, but you're approving it now. I think because we, we approved the, the going with these people, what, two I months ago. Uh, we approved the insurance. You approved months. going with the company. You didn't approve okay. the policy. That's part of it. It just flies along. Okay. Let's be professional and let's follow the laws. That's right. all I ask. Uh, I need a motion. I'll make the motion. Well, Counts payable, that's where we are. Yes, 
out of them still. And speaking of young fail with money, we still don't have a copy of the final budget. You were given one at the, at the September. And it changed. In my motion, it changed. So we need the final budget. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Jordan, you going to make a motion? I did. All right. Any second? I second that motion. All in favor? Yeah. Item number seven is passed. And item number eight, hand cover sewer plant presented by James Gilly. Let me say something before Mr. Gilly comes up. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to make a motion to not consider the next 10 items on the agenda until we get through what the people have asked for this morning and try to work with them and see where we're going because it's obvious that we need to go back to the old-fashioned way of doing things take care of business take care of our drainage take care of our water and sewer without expanding because right now we can't handle what we have much less add in more okay so what the people need to know is that half of what this uh, new sewer plant is going to cost is paid for. I understand that, grant. but that money's not going to right. It'll be there if you want okay. to go back and well, There's not going to go. be any money needed for this plant for quite some time. And half of it, if you take advantage of it now, the county has a grant that's going to pay for half the of county, it. The county, that half million, three million, what it was. Yes. Yeah. That grant so, money, as per Commissioner Stewart to say, will still be there. It's not going to work. But what Tom, is, what, what, what Tom is trying to say, I believe, this is not for today. This, this is, is something in the future. Four years not in the future. Your problems today. Yeah, yeah, yeah something else too. Okay. Go ahead. It's not, they're not building this for the development. That plan is at 80% right now and what's 90% of the maximum. Don't we have a lot of space in the Amway plant? Why can't we divert some sewer down there? We don't have the plant. Or why not build something that you're going to need in well, the future? Well, wait a minute. We have now, a plan. Let's get back on track, please. Uh, well, this is part of the motion. This is the other part. She has made a motion. Okay, right. but um, we're in the discussion phase of the motion. We don't have any water plant down. We can't divert some of this sewer down there where we have a lot of space. We've been diverting the sewer out of that sewer plant. I don't know how expensive that would be to do that. Well, Adam, we so take what, what I'm trying to say is this plant here is not for right now. It's quite uh, in the Okay. We're, we're going to only argue. Now, I have a motion. Yes, you do. To eliminate the next 10 items on the agenda until we can get back on track. Take care of the business that we have delegated us now without taking no more. Uh, so I'm assuming you're pre-programmed to go ahead and vote for the sewer plan. So number eight is just a presentation. So it might hey, it's all it's all presentation. So I suggest you look into that camera that they're loud screaming. It's straight screaming. Man, screaming. We need to and go right ahead. Okay. And tell people what you're doing. Ma'am, if, if you make an emotion, we need a second. If not, it's going to no, die for like a second. I can't talk, but there might be a lot of things that people need to know. Yes, Go ahead. They're not hearing. But no, ma'am. Well, they've heard from one side. Let's get back on track here. Well, you have a right in discussion. You said whatever you want, Tommy. That's true. Yes. Uh, I've been told to get back on track. Okay, let's get back on track. Follow our agenda. So. Okay. Uh, Dorothy has made a motion. Do I hear a second? If there is no second, the motion has died for lack of second. And we will get back to Mr. Gilly's presentation. Thank you, sir. All right. Good morning. My name is James Gilly with the U.S. Capital Advisors. Um, the, uh, I'm here to present an update on the uh, potential financing plan for the uh, rehabilitation of the sewer plant. Um, Mr. President, with your uh, permission, I can, I've got a presentation uh, can hand out. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Please do. Need any help? Yeah. I believe we have a copy. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One, one question. Mr. Work, we've got a raise of water rate. Let, let him do his presentation. Yes, sir. But this is work. Your presentation is work. We've got to raise the water rate. 
based off of this, the district's 2018 uh, financial statements, it, and based off of those revenues, it does appear that a, um, additional revenues would be required. Uh, that's not based off of my Yes, sir. Please continue. Well, we've uh, been in discussion with uh, Mr. Shadden and the uh, district's engineers uh, about different options of the, the potential ways to finance this, this project in the most economical and cost-effective way. Um, the uh, Texas Water Development Board does have a uh, does have funding available for a project of this type through their uh, their Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Those uh, those the rates that they offer on those loans are, are subsidized and uh, based off of current uh, estimates we <coughs> believe that the district could finance uh, a portion could finance the, the loan portion for under one percent we're estimating about point point uh, eight zero percent uh, the, the rate of uh, a term of 20 years um, generally the process would be that uh, we would uh, the, uh, the district's engineers would help uh, prepare a project information form submitted to the Texas Water Development Board, begin the application process. Applying for the financing doesn't commit you to anything. Uh, once, the, uh, once the application is submitted, it takes approximately three to four months to, uh, uh, to go through the process to get to the Texas Water Development Board for consideration. Um, and so based off of that timeline, we're roughly estimating that could be between a May, I'm sorry, a, a March and April uh, closing of next year. So uh, funds might be available sometime in the spring. Um, and again, uh, this, if the district decided to proceed with an application, it, it, you're under no obligation to accept the funds. Even if the funds were awarded, you're, you're still under an obligation to, sec to accept that loan, those loan uh, funds. So the, it appears that that might be the most economical and cost-effective way to, uh, to, uh, to finance this project. Um, and I'm just happy to entertain any questions. Uh, Patrick is here. He's the grant administrator. Patrick, what kind of timeline uh, for the Harvey money that the county has? Good morning. Morning, sir. My name is Patrick Blitzer. I'm the grant administrator for um, Chambers County. Um, so just uh, just a brief sort of update kind of where we are with with this application so that um, we can all be on the same page with this um, application was uh, submitted to the general land office um, in uh, in August and or excuse me in July and that has made its way through all of the review processes so in other words what they've told me is that that application has been moved into the contract provision um, uh, unofficially and more or less verbally, they've expressed to me that um, they expect to, to get contracts out um, by December of this year. Um, so we would expect the county is going to be faced with executing contracts by December, January time frame. Um, they're going to have uh, approximately 30 days to execute that contract. Um, and or potentially have a reason for extending that and or um, returning those dollars. So there is going to be a time frame and that's the general time frame that we're sort of working with right now with that grant. Um, none of that is um, on paper. Um, the only thing that's on paper uh, to me is that that application has moved on into contracts. So. Um, you, what I'm working with and what I'm sort of uh, advising y'all and uh, the county is that uh, we need to have a uh, relatively firm decision on this project um, on or around December, if not prior to that, um, so that the county can feel confident in executing uh, that contract with your land office. Um, there are several uh, items that we included into the, uh, the application. Uh, that essentially you know, detailed the need for funding to come from the district, and that's that's where we are. I don't know if that answers your question. I'd be happy to clarify. Well, see, this, this project may come online in 2022. I believe that's kind of the estimate of it. So we have to look to the future. Well, um, so uh, 
I don't I don't know exactly the, uh, what you're right. That's just like, I mean, right. but, but in terms of the project itself, um, we should expect to have a contract um, you know, by January, and we will be expected uh, to uh, prosecute that contract, execute that project uh, within within a two two year period. Yes. Um, so. That's sort of the time frame that we're working on. If we get a contract in uh, 2020, then we should be expected to complete that project um, by uh, the end or the beginning of the end of 2021 or the beginning of 2022. That was my point. Was this is something that can't be done overnight? It has to be planned. It has to be executed for later on. If not, it just delays it even more. And we have an opportunity here to receive some funding to help us pay for this. So we do not have to pay with tax dollars. So yeah. this will benefit the people, but it will benefit them. It, it will be online maybe in 2022, and it will benefit the growth in the county. Everything about this is a good thing. Oh, yeah. like $4 million. It's still a, a good thing because the project is, we're going to need this later on. But anyway. Why would we have to pay that $4 million? That's what you're going to have. That's what you're going to have. Did you raise your packet? I did. You got a $4 million. Well, we're doing half of it. Yeah, but you have the study. You've got to pay your money. What's that? 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 Point of clarification, if you're referring to the pack, there were two scenarios. The first was a financing to the water, Texas Water Ground Board, which has those subsidized rates. The second was a, was a, a, a offering in the public market. Um, and so the, the, in the public market, the district would have a higher borrowing cost just because it is not a subsidized rate. <clears throat> Notwithstanding, the district has an excellent credit and excellent bond rating. Um, but the, it appears that the water fountain board would be a okay, one but you he suggested or the type of So it's a difference between three percent and one percent yes. increase. Right. Uh is that gonna to continue to increase because I, I noticed the the uh debt goes up debt up goes up every year after a few years. Uh, one of them. Uh, no ma'am the it would be a, a one time uh, in order to issue revenue bonds, you have to prove that you can cover your. And that's going to cover your highest years. Yes, ma'am. Of your debt service. Cover your high, your maximum debt service by one and a quarter, okay. one time. So and you, you have to collect money you have earlier to, that you're not going to be using on debt service. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got it. All right. All right. The store. Right. And what do you think uh, 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 the increase to our base fund would be? I just this is not a rate recommendation, but on average. Um, it, it appears that the average additional cost, monthly cost per connection per customer would be about two dollars or less, and that's in order to prove that you have the sufficient revenues to cover your debt service one and a quarter times. And that's not a that's not an annual increase. It's a, it would be a one time increase to make to show that you have those revenues based off of your existing bond covenants, but you would have to continue to maintain sufficient revenues. To pay your annual debt service at uh, in, in uh, to honor your existing bond covenant. So, thank you. Is there any further questions, for Mr. Gibbs? One. Yes. yes. Okay. Let's assume the board votes to do this. Then we have limited our capacity to go back and buy bonds again if we needed them for drain. Um, it, I, I think the answer would be it depends on how you plan to pay for those uh, those drainage bonds. If you but it will limit what we can borrow. Well, if you ask for a vote, if you decide to pay for those drainage bonds through a tax rate, um, I don't. Um, Different. It's, it's a separate credit, and so right. you're you're currently your revenues, your, your utility revenues are pledged to pay your revenue bond. Uh, if if the district were you know, Again, to offer a, an election to. Um, you shift you your obligation for the bonds and you pledge your tax revenue. Well, I understand that. that. It doesn't limit. But they're the keeping it separate, in other words. Yes, that's that's absolutely correct. You're, Good question, Joe. You're, um, 
you're, you're not allowed to They keep it separate, but we come in one month. I don't believe that the, I'm not privy to detail, but I don't believe that Listen it's, to us. Mr. Miller, how much could we decrease our expenses here at Trinity Bay so we wouldn't have to raise the rates on people? Um, that's, uh, <laughs> that could have to be a more uh, intimate with the operations. Too. I mean, you're looking at income versus expenses, is that not correct? Yes, sir. So, okay. So, so how much do we have to decrease our expenses here? Okay, so just as an estimate, the shortfall, um, your annual revenue shortfall is approximately seventy dollars to $100,000 in order to, uh, I'm sorry, let me say that in another way. You would have to generate an additional somewhere from seventy dollars to $100,000 annually to make your coverage to pay the exist, uh, to, to pay your existing debt service and issue additional bonds. So we'd have to increase our expenses two hundred thousand dollars. Is that correct? What you're doing? I, I would say approximate. I'm just uh, kind of caught my card, but I, I think the answer would be that you need to come up with. You need to show that you have about seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars of additional revenues. I'm sorry, net revenues, which would be your your gross revenues after expenses, uh, not taking into account depreciation. So. You need to show that your net income is seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars annually. So that would either mean you need you would increase your revenue intake or decrease your expend, uh, expenditures. Uh, yeah. And I, I don't know the extent to which uh, I agree more. Uh, out. Thank you, Mr. Gill. Is there any further questions for Mr. Gill? No, we had a we had a. Tommy, in fact, made a motion five months ago to start having meetings to decrease our expenses, so we went out to raise our rates. And we have. So. And it never did happen. We had decreased our budget. So you decreased your budget. Let's talk about the money. No, your revenue has dropped. You didn't decrease. You're still spending budgeting 100% of your revenues. Totals, but it didn't decrease anything. And when I made the last motion to go forward with the sewer plan, it was tied to ag laws that we try to get lower our expenditures and we unanimously vote, well, which was one time we unanimously voted to do that. But then when it came time to do it, no, you didn't. When it came time to do it, Jerry said, I can't cut anything off the budget. And y'all said, okay. But he did. He did cut some amount. There's nothing cut. You're still, it doesn't matter what you're total budget was last year and your total budget. It's your back to your revenues. Your total income is budgeted. You're not saving a penny. That doesn't cut it. I mean it doesn't matter. If your budget's one million or ten million and you budget every penny coming in, you're not putting anything back for an increase. And we didn't we're still budgeted hundred percent of our revenues. So no so that kind of nullified. I disagree. Yeah. How do you disagree? Where because you, I did the budget and I cut, I cut The total it still uses 100% of your revenues, Jerry. Okay, would the public like to see the budget? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's go there. It doesn't matter what you spent last year on the line, I don't know what you spent this year. It's the total money. We're not that I'm allowed to do it. Yeah. The budget doesn't matter. Plenty of Excuse me for uh, speaking out of turn, but I just wanted to. No, it is your turn. I'm sorry. I no, no, I just wanted to good. clarify a point that our, our projection, our estimates are based off of the district's uh, financial statements for ending 9 30 2018. So we're approximately a year out of. I think we're just going to have that. For your debt credit ratio. That, that's correct. We're looking at your 18, your 18 financials. So any changes that you might have had in your 19 financials are not taken into account. So I'm sure. Thank you, Mr. Gilly. Yes, and after two months back to back, we're not going to have people living in these houses like we did. The revenue is going to drop. And your tax base is going to drop. And we haven't taken that into consideration with the new budgets either one. Let's just try to stay on. I know the budget, everyone wants to know, but that's not really the agenda item. And for my item number eight, if Mr. Gilly is finished with his presentation, then we need to go to number nine. Yes. Thank you. Just stick to the task. All right. 
All right, we'll get back on track here. Thank you, Mr. Gibbs. Yes, sir. Thank you. And item number nine is review and consider adjusting monthly wants to do, but uh, it may be necessary to get this done. I do know that we have bonds already that we are paying on. We refinanced them and got a lower interest rate and cut our bond money down so that we could get prepared to do some more things for Chambers County and borrow more money. And uh, if, I, if I understand right, if we do this bond, it would only be five or six years, I believe, and we would pay the other old bond out. Then we would lower our money, our bond money again, our debt money. Then we could actually add another bond in five or six years from now, if, if I think that's right, Jerry. And that money would be due for some other project that Chambers County needs. So you have to plan long term on these things. You can't do it overnight. The problem is every time you issue new bonds or refinance, you have all the closing costs, which needs to survive you do. here. But, that but is, the cost that's is a nature of it. It's already put into the total cost. amount. Right. It is in the amount. You're right. Well, okay. You just finance it. It's all you're doing. And, but nobody wants to go up, and nobody wants to do anything. No, no. How was the last time we've gone up on the water? I no, believe it was in a... a Hey, you were on the board, Dorothy, when y'all went up before. No, it was 2002, I think. Okay. So it's been 17 years. Uh, it was before my time, and it's been a long time, and we tried to... What? I think it was 1999. I thought it was... Right. I wasn't here then, but... Right. It, was a mess. it was a long time ago. But Everybody we're, was mad. Right. We're trying to deliver a good product at a reasonable rate and trying to fix the sewer problems here in Wayne. Like Ms. Fontenot that left a while ago, she had a cavity six foot deep behind her house from the bad sewer system. And we spent money to fix those problems. And uh, we're spending money on drainage, we're spending money on sewer, we're spending money on water, trying to get done. Everything costs more and more and more. If this had been tended to along the way, it would not have been so bad. But you come to these points where you have to get in debt to be able to fix the problem so you can move ahead. And I think that this sewer plant in Handcomer, it's, like I said, it's, it's two to three years out, but we need this because the population over there is gonna grow. We're already at 90, 80% of our sewer plant over there. There is more to Chambers County than Winnie and Stowe. We also deal with Oak Island, it's dire need of sewer rehabilitation. Those people are suffering over there. So you're saying you need to oh, rehab that before we have to do it. We can't sit down and take a children. Right. But all of these all of these things are in the back of my mind, things we need to do. Here, here's where this, this split vote comes from. Half of us don't know what's going on. They're not aware of what's happening. We're not made aware. The information is available and to I'm you just it. like it is to me, Jeff. You don't, you don't let us know. I do too. Every chance I get, I tell you. But get back to item number Friday the county we didn't know a thing about. They didn't they didn't want us to go, actually. So well, I didn't I didn't want to go. That was for the Jeffrey, you know that. Well I just found out there was a meeting here this week speaking of being on black side of the news media where we're gonna run sewer over to Jefferson County. You want to, with a grant or you wanna explain that? That's, that's not on the agenda. No, it's not that is, we're on number item number nine, review and consider just right. the monthly minimum we, water and we sewer rates. Review so and review and consider monthly minimum water sewer rate. Okay, so it wouldn't go up more than two dollars, right? That's what Mr. Gilly suggested. Somewhere in between one and a half. Is there any way I can two. ask them what they think about that? The two has a step right up. No. no. I can't no. do that. All right. So you're going to vote to just up it. You don't know how much. Well, it's no less than or no more than two dollars. That's not going to fly. In the what manner you think well, about? Because it'll end up more than that. Only part of the way they feel speak is. We've heard what they feel about raising rates, and when we've heard a lot of other things too. Yeah, we also heard this about the Smith Point line. It was free, and nobody knew that. No, we're paying. That was a grant. No, we're not. We're, we're paying the Smith Point line out of our range. Then the money is reimbursed to us. It's it's reimbursed. Reimbursed. Okay, let's get back on item number nine. We need to 
Okay. Have, you, have you viewed, considered monthly minimum water sewer rates? Do we need a motion on this? Yeah, we do. Well, how much money are you going to make the motion for? You don't have anything on your agenda. Well, you would say uh, no more than two dollars. That's you think that's going to do. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. Basically, if they would go along yeah, with that, no, two dollars is what needs to be done. I, I sure hope it is. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> No, sir, it was not. It was talked about everything well, else. I wasn't here. I was in the hospital, but I 
Uh, yes, you were. And thank God you're all right. Yeah, I was all uh, Good. Good. Need a motion to receive and approve district obligation. I understand we never had to do this before. That's like we're getting treated like a contractor. We're, we're, we're <laughs> trying to put a bond like a contractor. Oh, actually, so to work with yeah, no, actually, any of this is happening yet. So. Right. So no, I'm going to have to do it. Look at the votes. Look. May 2nd. But they're all talking about a split vote. Yeah, it is. So, yes, three of you are going to do it. You no, can. Like you're the one that made the motion to do all of this. With clauses you. that you didn't did, did do. We have some clauses to do it. And you didn't do you know, it. those clauses were fulfilled. No, they weren't. They weren't. No, so that, that is the only one. Okay, I need a motion. I need a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And all this needs to be known that this is not going to affect our drainage in no way at all. No. No, no, no. One really? Place so the vote was 3 to 2, item number 12. How does it affect the sewer and rain? The people that have the sewer. How is it going to affect the sewer? We're crapping their bathtub. And we're spending the money on the Who was the three that voted for the sewer and winning? Who was the one that voted against the sewer? You, you, you did. You did. Yes, we did. I did. I'm still. Yeah. Let's move on here. Yeah, we can argue after me. Yeah, item number 12. Consider, consider possible action on entering into a local, interlocal agreement with Chambers County for Hancomer Sewer Plant Project. I'll make the motion that we enter into an interlocal agreement with Chambers County for Hancomer. Hey, Need a second? All in favor? Yeah, I've seen that on something somewhere. Facebook or something? Yeah. All of those minus. All of those. Yep. Yeah. Did we put new sewer lines and all the ones that are in there? Item number 12, Jim. We're opposing it. Okay. Yeah, she, she's. Three to two. Three to two. Thank you. Item number 13, review and consider opening an electronic escrow account to deposit funds for TBT's portion of Hancomer sewer plant. We're going to make the most of it. Well, All I, in I, favor? We don't, I don't understand how that works. I mean, you're throwing out something we need to know how it works. Why are we, I mean, they just take the money if they want it. Is that what an electronic? That's not what I was telling you. Well, I know how it works. Tell me how it works. It, you have the interlocal agreement, and what happens is we put it in there. That way, the county is not stiff for their money, and they will they will bill us, and we pay them. Well, as we never stiff anybody. Like we believe we can stiff anybody. This is business. I mean, really they know we're serious. Our money. Maybe they know we're broke. Maybe but that's why. No, ma'am. We don't have control of our money. They will send us a bill, and we have to determine whether the engineer has has fulfilled his portion of the. So we should be paid, just like any other project. We've never had to do that before. No. We've never done A lot of these things we've never done, done before. You've never built the sewer plant before. Right. And, and we're so doing we things for the people. Maybe we build a sewer plant at this point. Yeah, possibly. I mean, he ain't coming. Winnings. You don't want to go Winnings. Yeah, we'll build a bunch of them. All right, just start the chair. It's going to be 3 2. All right, we have a, a motion on number 13. Uh, did we get that? Yes. Electronic deposit funds. Yes, Jeffrey interrupted before we voted. Is that well, correct? Yeah. He did vote on 13. I'm sorry. I have a motion. Correct. That's what I thought. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Have a second. All in favor? No. 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 Opposed? Three, two. Okay. <coughs> Moving on to item number 14. Review and consider depositing $362,000 in an escrow account for TBT's portion of LJN engineering fees budgeted in the 2019 and 20 budget bond reimbursement. This one has already been budgeted. Yes. Yes, it has. It was in the budget. And it is re reimbursable. We'll get our money back. I'll say, 
All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Okay, straight to. Item number 15, review and consider bond reimbursement resolution for funds spent on hand cumber sewer plan. Bond. It's just an order what you need to do. I'm like, so. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. no. Uh, FY, we were going to take $2,000 coming out of the drainage fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not either, Jeff. We're not taking any money out no, of the drainage fund. No, you're wrong. All kinds of budget. Why are you trying so hard to make the people money? Well, wait a minute. It's already budgeted, but it's transferred $700,000 up there, so I'm sure it's coming out of that. Lee Ann said we were signing that in a few months ago. Okay, let's get back. I'm on item number 16. A resolution authorizing the filing of TCQ's bond application and TWTB project information form for the Handcomer Sewer Plant Project. Yes, sir. At the time, uh, uh, we looked at, whenever we looked at them, uh, doing bonds, uh, it was past the deadline for the Texas Water Development Board. And uh, I met with Kathleen Jackson, head of the board and development board, and she still they still had some money, so we went from three percent to one percent interest. So we didn't know which way it would go when the agenda was out. And according to them, they will they will have the money to fund it. So we uh, want to do the water development, which will save us money. Yes, or the three percent to one percent. Thank you, sir. Need a motion. I'll make the motion. I'll make it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No, I'm for this. No. I have to ask the post. And I'm saying yes. Yes, ma'am. Item number 16. I'm Carry. I'm Did you vote it, Jeff? Yeah, I did. Okay. Item number 17. Review and consider authorizing LJA Engineering to prepare a contract to advertise and take bids for the sewer. Real innovation phase three, which includes that main 20 inch pipe that runs down the main road, which caused a lot of problems because it collapsed and it backed up sewer in everybody's house. This 20 inch pipe, if we replace it, it was the most expensive part of this sewer fix for Winnie and Stowe. And it will be what, 800,000, is it, Jerry? Uh, we budgeted 700,000 in there, and what the way we did it is we put some alternates in there. Right. So if it comes in below 700,000, we'll do some more. And, and uh, this is it right here. This is in front of the school, and you can see it's right. collapsed and stopped up. That's a 20 inch line in there. So uh, this is the bottom of the line. Yes. The main way it gets into the plant. We have to fix it, or all the other work we've done is useless yes. because it has to flow through. And we budgeted for seven hundred thousand dollars for this. For this we year. transferred eight hundred thousand on that resolution for the sewer phase three. Then we budgeted eight hundred thousand. Uh, right. we, so. we have eight hundred thousand. Yes, that. that's correct. Yeah. All right, but that's what this is for: is to finish the sewer so that it won't back up into people's houses. It will work properly. We have to finish the program. Mike Wheels is working hard on a lot of other things for the water. But we have to finish this. So anyway, this is item number 17. Okay, I'll make the motion. Uh, Need oh, a second? Yes. Dorothy seconded. All in favor? Aye. Motion has carried unanimous. Item number 18, review and consider drafting an agreement and establish a rate to charge for water to Bolivar <laughs> Peninsula. Uh, it was noted by the one fellow that during the storm, Bolivar came in here, the, the plant here in Winnie was flooded, so they were out of work. So we opened the valve and put in a meter, and we sold, we, we gave them water at the time to be determined how much we charge for it later. Because, I think it's Oh, uh, definitely so. Actually, it's, it's not Bolivar, it's actually with the LNBA. So right. The LNBA right. does it. Bolivar. And I talked to, we, they use five Wait. million gallons. I mean, just a couple of days. Yeah, but, I mean, and I, so, anyway, we agreed on $3.50 for the 
which is about as balanced as we can get. Yeah, that covered, uh, I think it make. I think it cost us. What was a dollar seventy something to make? Well, we had, uh, during the storm we had, we went from eight hundred thousand to two million gallons a day. So we used a little more chemical. <laughs> than we had an operator there twenty four hours a day. So Scott Hall and I agreed on three dollars and fifty cents per thousand. Right. And the connection can go the other way if we ever sure. have a problem. We, yeah. can, we pay them three dollars. That, that guarantees that you will never be out of fresh water. Yes. And I like that. I like those guarantees. So, okay, I need a, a, a motion. I'm making a motion to put it in three minutes. All in favor? Motion has carried. Item number 19, review and consider payment number three for Playco LDT for the ground storage tank replacement. At the Winnie Water Park in the amount of eight eight thousand eight thirty. I so move. I so second. All in favor? Aye. Motion has carried. Okay. Uh, right now we'll take a report on GLO projects. Tom. We've got boxes coming in tomorrow morning. Uh, they'll run boxes tomorrow and Saturday. We'll start digging Elm up Monday morning. Should be done with it by the end of the week, and I've got block coming in Wednesday to start laying block from Chestnut to the north. Yeah, moving along good. Rain slowed us a little bit. Yeah. Yes, sir. How's the Smith Point water? Uh, uh, the Smith Point Point water line. Uh, there was a total of seventy-two thousand feet to be done. At this point, uh, Trinity Bay has installed 51,730 feet, uh, which leaves us with 19,008 feet left. And we're averaging roughly, uh, it varies, but 1,000 feet a day. So hopefully in 20 days, we'll have all the lines in. Then we do the tie-ins, put air release valves, fire hydrants, and everything else, and dress the job up. So. I believe we're on schedule. You're already pressed your attention to all the way to uh, 562? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes. To 562. And the other thing is we have some bores in between that's got a, like some gaps. So we, we all that has to be uh, done. And the boring contractor is a little bit behind. And, it, and for people who don't know, this was a GLO project where we got government or state of Texas funding. And uh, the people down that way pay their taxes just like y'all do. And they were out of water by noon. If they had a fire, they couldn't even put it out. And that's not right because they pay their tax money too. So we're doing this to help improve their water system also. So thank you. Tommy, anything else? Um, All right. Okay, moving on to draining. Danny's not here. No, sir, he's, a, he's off, and uh, Amos had to meet with the pipeline contractor. Uh, our Pecan 60 is working on Robinson Lake levee project. Our second Pecan is working on the East Park of Double Value in Monroe City. Uh, our Pecan 30 is working on Archer Bilo north of Fairview. Uh, working at our cat, the 329 is working on the Smith Point borderline. Uh, Long Reach, we moved from ditches, bridge, and culverts. Uh, debris after the storm, make sure everything is uh, is flowing. Uh, worked on the east side of Spindle Top, north of 65. Uh, in the last, uh, I want to say in the last five years, we have cleaned Spindle Top from the Liberty County line all the way down to, to 124. With, and put a short stick through there and then put a long stick through it. So all of those rush and all of them have been cleaned. But you know, in five years, a tallow tree grow, or a willow tree grow 10 feet. So it's it just, there's so much to do that, uh, but we have cleaned it all the way from the top to the bottom. Uh, our dozer are working on the levee project. Our second dozer is uh, doing dress up behind the water people. Our 308 is, is working uh, uh, on another water line project. The drainage crews removed debris from the ditches, bridges, culverts, and numerous locations. Assisted the haul truck and move uh, equipment around. We used our spray buggy and we drove all of our ditches 
to make sure there was no debris hung up on the bridges and fallen trees and so on and so forth. And those that we did, we, uh, we removed the debris out of it. Uh, that is reimbursable from FEMA as emergency work. Uh, and uh, assisted the drain accused to hauling the equipment around and remove the debris. I would like to point out that every piece of equipment that we own is busy doing something. Yes. We got everything on the job as much as we can and uh, doing what we can. We're also we're finished spraying for the year because it's gotten too cool. So we'll start up next year spraying these bushes again. So utilities? Um, start out, Mike, with the uh, Smith Point project between September 6th and uh, October 6th. We've installed 9,020 feet of 12 inch water main total footage from the first day of laying pipe. May 29th, 48,150. Uh, we've got approximately four miles that's changed since 4.3. It's yeah. uh, right, it's actually a little less than four miles. I did not do the service guy's uh, average number this time. I just did the construction. Construction crew installed 1136 feet of 20 sports main on Fig Ridge. Also repaired two cabins on Buccaneer, which was one, what, that's one on there. Yes. Uh, crew that's in a uh, two inch line on Stanley Road for 300 feet and made a one inch staff for a customer and crews also installed 245 feet of six inch and 209 feet of sewer on uh, West Lama on the, uh, to serve a water tap down and several water taps also on the drive. Uh, All right, sir. Any other questions? Mike, yes, sir, I do. Uh, due to the tropical storm, we had many issues at the water plants. Uh, the storm basically took out all the controls and communications of both of the water plants. We had an operator come out there as soon as he could uh, get out there, reestablish the controls, resetting controls. We had to replace a lot of the damaged uh, equipment that we had out there as far as controls and pumps and stuff like that that obviously got hit by lightning. So we do keep spares. We had uh, we had all that on hand. We we got that replaced. Uh, the communication issues took several days due to the phone system itself was down. We're still waiting on uh, quotes for repairs for remaining control issues that we're still having at the plants and at the water tower. So we're working on all of that. Uh, the water plant also experienced some water damage due to le to the leaking roofs and damage to fencing. Waiting on quotes from that. The wastewater. Side, uh, we have replaced one pump at the loop lift station and one starter uh, at the Stuckey's lift station due to lightning. And uh, we're in the process right now making claims with our insurance company on all of that. I'll have that to them today. Uh, due to the flooding, we already touched on this. I just, it was on my report, so I'll go ahead and review it. Due to the tropical storm again, we did supply water to the LNBA. Uh, of course, as everybody knows, their plant flooded. We uh, supplied them for eight days at about four to five hundred gallons per minute for 24 hours a day, which, like we said, that came out to a little over five million gallons. Okay. Uh, and the contractor is scheduled to begin demolition on the ground storage tank at the Wing Water Plant next week, so that project's moving. Okay. You might explain what the water tank is for. Yeah, so the water tanks are, we, uh, we get the water tanks uh, inspected by an independent engineer every year. And due to the deterioration uh, of the galvanized coating in there, the tanks are at a point where they're, they're not at a point where they're going to collapse, but the recommendation is go ahead and start getting those guys in place. So we're, we went out for bids, we're changing the two at the Weenie Water Plant first, and then we'll start working on the west in the future. Yes, sir. Mike, just one more thing if you don't mind. Yes, sir. We can't say enough about the effort that Mike and his operators put out working handsomely through the storm. 24 hours a day. County yeah. never right. lost water during the storm. They never right. lost water during the storm. Right. 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 And then these guys work this yeah. endless hours out here to try to keep the service. They did. They did. And they, they divert a uh, round of applause. Thank you very much, Mike. Yes, sir. Any other thing at this time? No, sir. If not, uh, I can get a motion to call this meeting. All in favor? Yeah. Motion is removed. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Come back next time, too. When's the next?